Hello and welcome to lecture 11 of Math 2R03 and this is going to be part one. In today's lecture I'm going to finish up some of the discussion of section 3 book 3 point B of the textbook on null spaces in the range and then in the second part of the lecture I'm going to talk about section 3.3 .3 on matrices. So just to kind of recap where we were last time, I introduced the fundamental theorem of linear maps. And in that last lecture, we saw that if we have a finite dimensional vector space, and if we take a linear map from V to any vector space W, then the dimension of the vector space you start with is the sum of two different dimensions. It's the sum of the dimension of the null space of T, and it's the sum of the dimension of the range of T. So remember T is a linear map and it gives us a subspace inside of V, the null space, and it gives us a subspace in W, the range, and the dimension of those two, if you sum them up, give us the dimension of the original space we started with. So one thing I wanted to do is just kind of show you some consequences because we didn't look at that uh, any consequences in the last lecture. So the first co main consequence we have is uh, when we have a finite, two finite dimensional vector spaces, and if we know that the dimension of V is bigger than W, then we know without uh, any further work that no matter which linear map we take, uh, it cannot be injective. So you cannot have an injective map from V to W if the dimension of V is bigger than W. And then if we switch around the order, if the dimension of V is smaller than the dimension of W, then you can't have any linear map that is surjective. Okay? And both of these results will follow from the fundamental theorem of linear maps given up there above. So let me just kind of walk you through the proof of these things. So the first thing that you want to notice, right, is that the range of T is a subspace of W. That's something we proved in the last lecture. So because it's a subspace, we know that the dimension of the range of T is less than or equal to the, uh, the dimension of W. So if we use the fundamental theorem of linear maps, then we know that the dimension of the null space of any T that we're looking at is equal to the dimension of V minus the dimension of the range of T. And because the dimension of the range of T is less than or equal to the dimension of W, when we subtract, we flip around the signs, right? So this is equal to the dimension of dimension of V minus the dimension of W, but the dimension of V is strictly bigger than the dimension of W, so we get that this is greater than zero. But what that means is that the null space of T is not equal to the zero space, right? Because its dimension is bigger than zero. So the null space of T is not equal to zero, and from what we proved last class, or last lecture, this means that T is not injective. So our function cannot be injective. So that's how we prove part A. Let's, part B is kind of done in a similar fashion. And w at some point we want to make use of the, uh, we want to make use of the fundamental theorem of linear maps. And so actually that's what I, the first thing I've done here is I've taken the main result of the fundamental theorem of linear maps, but I've rearranged it. I solved for the range of T. So the dimension of the range of T is the dimension of V minus the dimension of the null space of T. And so since we're subtracting here, this is less than or equal to the dimension of V. And we know that we're given that this is less than or equal to the dimension of W. So because the dimension of the range of T is strictly less than the dimension of W, these two spaces can't be the same because they don't have the same uh, dimension. So this means that range of T is strictly contained in W, which implies that T is not surjective. Because to be surjective, we would need equality here. But the fact that they have different dimensions prevents us from having equality at, uh, of subspaces.
And just to kind of finish up this part, I want to relate it back to what we've seen in Math 1B03. So here in blue is something that we've seen, which is if you have any system of linear equations, uh, and this is actually, maybe I should put the word homogeneous system of linear equations. So we have uh, equations and the number of variables is more than the number of equations, right? So the n's is the number of variables and the m is the number of equations. And if we have n is bigger than m, it has a non-trivial solution. So there's one solution to this system of linear equations that's not all zeros. And this actually follows from uh, what we just said, and I want to kind of explain the connection. So in Math 1B03, the way that we went around it, or went around, uh, the way that we went to prove this is if we take this matrix, the coefficient matrix, here, because we have more, uh, we have more columns, as more columns than rows, it has a column corresponding to a free variable. So once we have a column corresponding to a free variable, because we're looking at a homogeneous system, we would get an infinite number of solutions. So that's the way that we would approach this in Math 1B03. But what we just what we just proved actually gives us a different way of seeing this, right? Because we can take this exact same coefficient matrix and notice that A defines a linear map from Rn to Rm, and given by taking your vector x and mapping it to A times x, right? And so what we have is that T is a linear map from Rn to Rm. And since N is greater than or equal to M, right, which is the same thing as saying that the dimension of Rn is less than or equal to, is greater than the dimension of Rm, right, what we're doing is just a special case of the very first theorem. All right, so what we have is that because n is bigger than m, we have uh, t is not uh, injective. So this implies that the null space of T, which is the same thing as the null space of my matrix A, strictly contained or the element uh, zero. So that means that IE, there has to be a non-trivial solution to AX equals zero. Okay, so what we did in Math 1B03, we would we did everything kind of describe in terms of free variables, but we really don't need that language. We can do it all in terms of linear maps. So this is the last part that I wanted to say about the uh, fundamental theorem of linear maps. In parts two, three, and four, we're going to talk about matrices that you can attach to linear maps.